The improvement in EBIT and revenue has resulted in our earnings per share and headline earnings per share improving by 139% and 121% respectively. And I'll unpack that further in, in the slides to follow. On the positive side from a liquidity, um, our gearing is at a respected 28.1%, which is a 7% improvement on our December closing gearing of 34.6%. Overall, our net asset value per share has improved by 8%. Richard, can we move on to the next slide, please? On our sale and features, the items I would like to highlight is the average dollar LME has improved uh, or has increased by 41%, which has largely driven our ne- revenue, but at the same time put huge pressure on, on, on our working capital and our liquidity levels. The average exchange rate for the, for the six months has decreased by 13%, and a special call-out is on the raw product side, an improvement on our sales volume of 43%. On the profitability side, I've, in my highlight slide, I've, I've highlighted the improvement on EBIT and earnings per share and headline earnings. But, but also, I would like to point out an 88% improvement on our normalized earnings per share. If I move on to the next uh, slide on our liquidity, we continued to invest in our asset base. Uh, by a 77% improvement on last year, while showing a 9% improvement on our net working capital as a percentage of our revenue. And this has been achieved by the tight control on our working capital and continuous innovative ways on managing our, our stock levels more than anything else. Our free cash flow improved by 142%. And our closing net debt, although 12% higher than last year, June, uh, it's still within our, it's still within our, our range of maintaining a 500 million um, debt capacity level. Our net equity ratio improved by, um, or debt equity ratio decreased by a marginal 1%. I move on to my next slides where I create a, I create, sorry, Rich, can you move on to the next one? All right. On this, on this slide, I will take you through the headwinds and the tailwinds that our business has experienced, but explaining it uh, on the movement on headline earnings per share. On the external factors, that we've experienced during this last six months has been an impact of 82 cents negative, largely driven by the stronger currency of 52 uh, 52 cents, inflation, the commodity pricing that we've experienced in the last six months, largely driven by the pandemic, and freight costs itself attributed to the 82 cents movement in external factors. On the control, controllable, huge positive, positive has been an improvement of 68 cents on our sales volumes itself, um, and a 37, 37 cents movement on a prior year excess hedging, as we temporarily suspended our hedging policy for metal and currency as a result of the volatility experienced in the market currency and operations during this year. Overall, we've got a positive 20, 20 cents movement on our, on our headline earnings per share. On the next slide, I discuss each division uh, and, and provide feedback on, on, on a much improved performance both by raw products and our extrusions divisions. On raw products, the increased asset utilization, higher sales by 43%, with our local market sales up by 90% compared to H1 of 2020, 
has benefited hugely raw products this year. With the revenue itself increasing by 48%, headline earnings improving by 110%, and our net asset value for raw products improving by 5%. On extrusion side, the recovery of extrusion has continued the momentum established in H2 of 2020, delivering a strong performance in H1 of 2021. Revenue improved by 73%, headline earnings by by 200%, and extrusion's net asset value by 320%. Net profit has been impacted by 41 million of uh, profit that we made on the land sale that we concluded last year. But however, overall, a much improved performance of extrusion. On the next slide, I, I will take you through a bridge on on the EBIT movement on raw products itself. With the rising LME and our metal price lag resulted in a 76 million positive to our EBIT. But overall, our external factors and, and the headwinds they experienced by, by raw products itself accounted for 176 million rand, and the biggest factor being currency. On the controllable side, or what, what I would call it, the tailwinds, the increased volumes by raw products has, has resulted in a positive movement on EBIT of 214 million rand. And the excess hedging from prior year was, was amounted to 114 million rand. On extrusions, A movement of a loss of on EBIT of 34 million to a profit of 61 million, with external factors accounting for five five million, largely due to inflation. But the much improved capacity utilization and operational efficiency compared to last year contributed positively of 44 million to the EBIT line, and the profit on the sale of the land and buildings accounted for 41 million of the remainder of the much improved of 95 million on EBIT from last year to this year. Moving on to, to, to the net asset value as a whole for the business, uh, our net asset value improved from 2.2 million to 2.4 million with both raw products and extrusions return on equity uh, going up to 1% and 50% respectively. On the airline earnings per share, an improvement of 6% and 9, uh, well, uh, 6 cents per share and 9 cents per share compared to last year of 60 cents and 10 cents losses. On the next slide, I cover the currency versus commodity trend from 2017 to 2021. And you would see as in the last six months a real deviation between the exchange rate, the rand dollar exchange rate, and the dollar LME price pricing, which has resulted in the impact that we've seen on our revenue and also our, our cost base itself with regards to our related uh, manufacturing and conversion costs and overall uh, the pressure put on our working capital. We move on to the next slide, which is the analysis of our net cash flow from our opening debt in December of 751 million. The positive EBIT of 79 million I spoke about earlier but the impact of the 87 million on on working capital is due to continued momentum on focus on our focus on optimizing and tightening controls on on our stock on our creditors and our debtors at the same time there's on the proceeds on the sale of assets 
we we got a cash proceed in of 55 million net impact us reducing our net debt to a respective of 635 million for June 2021 on the next slide i cover the liquidity and the capital structure and i'm pleased to report that we've managed to maintain our headroom of greater than 500 million uh right up to June 21 and although our debt from June 20 has risen to six to risen from 569 to 635 it it's we still have enough headroom of more than 565 million to be able to 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 continue with our improvement plan and utilization of our assets our net debt to equity improved from 34.6 in December to a respective 28.1, and all our covenant ratios are well within the respective levels. On, on, on the next slide, on networking capital versus revenue performance, you can see we are very similar or marginally higher from a revenue point of view of 5.5 million versus the 5.2. And you see that our inventory levels have risen by quite a bit compared to 2019, largely due to the higher LME price. But we are very similar to June 20, even though the LME, LME price has risen considerably. And this is largely attributed to us optimizing our our metal purchases and and managing our our working capital um, and driving all the initiative projects that we have on on the capital expenditure we continue to responsibly maintain our asset base to ensure sustainability of our business we are on track with our capital program to spend close to 200 million this year on our assets.